Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome everyone to Sabahul Khair, our weekly video series where I discuss my thoughts and ideas concerning current affairs and I also attend to questions that you guys sent. So inshallah for this week, again a question uh, sent and it goes, Assalamu alaikum ustaz. Last week I was at the hawker center and when the makci passed me my food items, he said, saya jual. What is that and how should I have reacted? Let's break this down. Ladies and gentlemen, a number of important things. Firstly, I think that we have forgotten that in Islam, there is in fact a lot of discussion concerning money management and financial laws. Two out of five of our pillars of Islam concerns finances. Which ones? In our classical legal discourse, fiqh is divided into four components. Ibadat, Mu'amalat, Munakahat, and Jinayat. This is to say that money, finance, econs is something that is very much discussed within our religion. Secondly, concerning the matter at hand, let me begin by talking about this issue of sales transactions. Al-bay or sale transactions, there are five integrals of al-bay. The buyer, the seller, the object, the price, and also a contract. Concerning an aqad or a contract of transaction, our scholars mentioned that there are two ways by which a contract is formed. The first camp suggests that you do so by verbal agreement. So the seller would say, I sell. And to seal the deal, to confirm the transaction, the buyer says, I buy. Verbal. So this is where we get makcik saying, Na, I ni makanan ni. Oh, banyak lauk. Makcik jual ya. Cik, don't judge. So what are you supposed to have said? Saya beli. This is camp, camp one. Camp number two suggests that the contract in a sales transaction can be manifested through a verbal agreement and if not through physical means. Our scholars mentioned that these are physical actions that has been culturally known and accepted to mean offering, accepting, exchange of goods. So if the makci would say, saya jual, then your reply simply is, saya beli. So she is practicing the first methodology, the first camp. Thirdly, what do we learn from this? What we learn from this is that within our legal discussions, our scholars suggest ways by which two things happen. Number one would be that a legitimate transaction can be maintained. And they also suggest ways by which transactions can be fair and free from deception or ambiguity. Now, in our time, right, while we have still physical transactions, going to the shop, going to the hawker center, you have other forms of transactions as well, online, using your phone, and so on and so forth. So when people ask concerning these issues, then we go back to that particular discourse and we can figure things out. So alhamdulillah, ladies and gentlemen, that's our video for today. If you have benefited from this particular video, please do like, subscribe, share, inshallah, and I'll see you guys next week.